Welcome. This lesson on quadratic functions is uh, we're going to factor them using um, basic quadratic factoring when the leading coefficient is 1. So the thing in front of x squared is nothing or a 1 is there. So let's do a few. In the first set it says m squared plus 15m plus 50. Now the beautiful thing about this problem uh, essentially is the fact that it's not that hard to do. What I'm looking for, uh, what I tend to look for first when I do them, and you may do something different, you know, choose your own adventure, it, I tend to look at the sign that's here first. So if I start out looking at that second sign, it tells me a lot of useful information. If, for instance, it is a plus, I know that that means that the, my answer signs, my m something number, m something number, uh, is going, are they going to be the same. I know that if it is minus, they're going to be different. Now the thing that's useful for me here is if I look at the first sign, so right here, so now I'm down to the first sign section, if it is plus, they're both plus in my answer. If they're minus, they're both minus. If they're different, uh, my first sign tells me the sign on the bigger factor. There's that, kind of pop that into your head. So in this case, I know by looking at the second sign that my uh, plus sign tells me that my answers are going to be the same. So it's going to be uh, the overall format. I'm going to change color here to do the answer. At least I hope I am. M something and M something. I'm basically doing reverse uh, foil, I guess. So I know that they're both going to be the same. This sign, because it tells me to go, now look at the first sign, they're bo it's plus, so both of them are going to be plus. So I need positive and positive here. So that's the thing I'm going to do when there's nothing in front of my M. Uh, from here, all I need to do is start factoring 50. I need to make a factor list. When the signs are the same, I'm going to add my two factors of 50 to get 15. That's what I'm looking for. So my factors of 50, of course, are 1 and 50, 2 and 25, uh, 3 doesn't go, 4 doesn't go, 5 does, 5 and 10, of course, 6, 7, 8, all irrelevant. I'm looking for an, something I can add together, and it gives me 15. That set doesn't work, that set doesn't work, so 5 plus 10 is 15. So here's the factor set I'm going to use. All I have to do now is plug in the 5 here and the 10 here and I have my final answer. So the answer to this one is m plus 5 times m plus 10. If you want to check it, because you don't trust me, and that's probably for the best, um, you would just do the whole foil thing, I guess is probably what you've been taught for a while. I tend not to think of it that way, but that's a whole other issue, you end up with this. See, it starts with the question. So that's how that one works. Now in the next set, or in the next problem, I should say, um, I have a quadratic term and then I have a nothing at the end. So it's just a binomial that has r squared in it. In this case, I really can't do that type of factoring. All I can hope for is to pull out a common factor. They both have r in them, so I'm going to pull out an r to the front. And essentially what I'm doing now is dividing both of them by r. Once I pull it out, that's kind of the opposite. The distributed property is a multiply relationship, so to do factoring, it's division. So there'd be a 1 here, and a 1 here, and a 1 here. I'm just doing the exponents. 2 is bigger than 1, so I mark them out. Um, 2 minus 1 is 1, so I end up with r on the inside. And then the r's cancel here, so I'm left with plus 7. So it's possible you get one that looks like that. Just in case you did, I didn't want you to freak out. Uh, the next type is, uh, it has a 3 in front. What? I thought you said there's only going to be things with um, a coefficient of 1. Well, there is. The first step always of doing any of these types of problems is that you need to look to see if it's even possible, and it may or may not be, to pull out the common factor. Yeah. 
If you can pull out a common factor, you need to do so. 3 goes into all of those numbers, so I'm going to pull it out into the front before I can do anything else. If you don't pull out the common factor in the beginning, it ruins your chances of getting these questions right. So I'm going to divide this by 3, divide this by 3, divide this by 3. And I don't have any b's I can take out, so I end up with b squared um, minus 14b plus 40. Now I can do a list because I have one in front of my b squared. The 3 is going to be in my final answer, but I really don't do anything with it for the rest of the problem. So I'm pretty much ready to roll as far as that's concerned. Now I'm going to check my signs to tell me where I want to go next. This one says that both signs are going to be the same. This one says they're both going to be minus. It's really easy to fall into this trap that they're both going to be they're going to be different because these are different, but that's completely irrelevant. If you do the um, f multiplication after you at the end, if you had them as different signs, it can never give you this result because the n two have to multiply together to give you a positive. They need to be the same sign, so they're just going to be the same sign and both negative. So I'm going to have three in the front, b minus, and b minus. They're not going to be negative. They're going to be subtraction. I'm sorry, that was a misspeak. So now that I've checked my signs, I'm going to factor the C term, or whatever this is right here. And when the factors are the same, I'm going to look to add them together. And I know for a fact that one of the factors of 40 is, of course, 4 and 10. Since 4 plus 10 does equal 14, that makes a nice, easy solution for me to use. So I'm going to put 10 here and 4 here. It really doesn't matter what order you put them in. If the signs were different, it would matter. But if they're the same, you can put either one wherever you want. And that's my final answer. And if I wanted to go back and check it, I would do the distributive property first. So you'd end up with b squared. I, I mean, I would do the, it's still a level of distribution. And then end up with minus 4b, minus 10b, uh, plus 40. And I'd combine these two together and end up with b squared minus 14b plus 40, and then I'd do everything times 3, and it would give me my original equation. So that one works out just fine and dandy. One more, and I feel like I've met my quota for today. If I can get this thing to do anything. Here we go. Here's one that has a sign that's different at the end. Also, so the first thing I'm going to do is look for a common factor. 2 goes into all of them, so I'm just going to pull that 2 out. So the 2 is going to be in the front here, and end up with a squared plus 7a minus 8. So now I need to do a factor list after I look at the signs. I mean, this says it's this is minus, so it means that my answers are different. So I can put a plus here and a minus here. Or you could put the plus in the back, it doesn't matter. What will matter is where you put the factors. So if I have different signs, I actually have to subtract uh, the factors. So for 8, my factors are 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. So I'm looking for something that can give me 7 if I subtract. Uh, 8 minus 1 does give me 7, so my factors are going to be 8 and 1. And I can work them a couple of different ways. I do 8 minus 1 and it gives me 7, or I could possibly do 1 minus 8 and it would give me negative 7. This sign right here will determine which one of those groups I need to choose. I'm trying to make positive 7, so I need to uh, organize things in a way that will make that happen. So 8 needs to be behind the plus, that way the 1 can be behind that minus. So there's your final answer. Not too super difficult to do. Just make sure that you follow the whole setup of um, pulling out common factor, checking your signs, doing a factor list if you need to do one, and then um, just kind of working it out there at the end. So hope this helps.